<laughs> and I have to admit, right, thank you, thank you, Rick, thank you. And we have uh, a lovely um, acts and comics and friends joining us this evening. So we will be here for majority of an hour. So please stay tuned, um, hold the poo in, whatever it is. No, I'm joking. <laughs> there, go to the toilet if you need it. Anyway, this is quite nice to be sitting down, I have to say. It's been quite a week. Um, I'm, I mean, we've been you know free for quite a while but uh, I'm still trying to get fit and I'm not at the point where I'm walking up escalators you know <laughs> I'm still letting the escalators do the work <laughs> I haven't got that fit I haven't got that fit <laughs> hopefully um in the next couple of weeks but I am at the gym so that's good I hope everyone's happy not long now how exciting is this that's not long until well we can actually just like not bother about masks and stuff how long is how, how exciting is this it's like what 19th of July wow we can just be like you know what let's forget this ever happened and just take off our mask take off our clothes because it's summer and that's what we do in britain why not, <laughs> why not? um so but you know I, i'm curious to see actually of how many people are going to do this how many of us because obviously with habits and things it's easy to kind of to uh, get uh, for example, I mean, I, I saw this, there's a guy in the gym that I saw the other day and he was on the rowing machine wearing his mask, you know, like this, really <laughs> full on. And I, I thought, oh dear, poor guy, he had, he's, he's forgotten to take his mask off. I don't, do I tell him, is he okay? Will he collapse? I don't know. He's forgotten to take his mask off. I won't say anything. He's fine. He's still, you know, rowing. Then he got off the rowing machine. Uh, started walking around and took his mask off. <laughs> I thought, well, this is very unusual behaviour. <laughs> well, he's maybe lost it. I thought I might leave him alone because he's clearly lost it. And I don't know what, what he, world he lives in and how we all catch things, but it's totally different in his world. <laughs> so, anyway, that was something I noticed. Uh, holidays, we talked about holidays. Uh, anyone you've been uh, people have been away which is nice uh, Mark yes good uh, good uh, Gareth you're going on holiday are you maybe I don't want to publicize it to the world but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep the houses intact um, <laughs> but no um, with holidays um, I, I mean we all want to go on holiday I'm not in a position to go far away but the closest to being going on holiday for me is actually um moving in on my own you know it's been quite nice <laughs> it feels like I am on a holiday in comparison to the last uh what last year when I was living with six people and a baby <laughs> you know if you're living on your is own is the baby not a person um so I thought, what am I going to do to make myself feel like in more of a holiday vibe? So me living on my own, I think I'm going to, you know, just start kind of like changing my room around. Start, I don't know, putting pictures of palm trees to make me feel like I'm an Africa <laughs> or something like that and make it exotic. Um, and then I thought, but actually what will really make me feel like I'm on holiday, the whole full holiday vibe in 21st century, 2021? what will really do it for me and then I thought this will make me feel like I'm on holiday one of these if I just do one of these COVID tests <laughs> now I feel like I'm with everybody <laughs> and so I have one of these I do in fact <laughs> I have another one. <laughs> oh, here we go and another one yes um I admittedly didn't buy them. They were freebies. <laughs> yeah, gotta love a freebie. So technically, I can go on quite a few holidays now. Um, nowhere. Anyway, I'm gonna stop blabbing on. Um, it's been really nice to have these acts on. It's really nice to have them back on Frenzy. So I'm very excited. Let's uh, let's start a nice warm round of applause for our first act in the Zoom room. So if we can have a nice warm round of applause for Mark. Thank you very much. It's 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 great to be here. I've got loads of new puns for you, you know. Um, brought this along because um, uh, I like to start my act by telling you a little bit about my shelf. <laughs> <laughs> here we go, yeah. Here we go. You know what? I was thinking last night because uh, I've got nothing else to do. Um, how do um, 
where do Muslims in uh, Ecuador pray? And then I realized it must be Mosque Ito. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I don't know whether you know, I mean, you know me quite well, but I bet you didn't know I was a hummus fetishist. Yeah, I like watching my chick pee. <laughs> <laughs> so they say you are what you eat, uh, but I'm no pussy. <laughs> yeah. 64, eh? Um, I'm not, I'm 66 actually, nearly. Um, now, um, I, when I went on my first plane journey, somebody asked me the other day, where did you go to on your first aeroplane journey? I said, my seat. <laughs> okay. Now, I bet you didn't know that Bob Marley was a, was a graphic designer. I shot the serif. Okay. <laughs> I've got I've got a great gag about midwives. Midwives uh, got to work on the delivery. Hey. <laughs> yeah. And my wife said to me um, the other night, uh, "Why don't you grow a beard?" I said, "Because we don't have to do everything together." <laughs> now, um, my mother was a medium, uh, and my father was an extra large. No? Okay. Uh, so, what do you reckon? Lobotomy or antipsychotic drugs? It's a no-brainer. <laughs> now, I, know, I, I, I just hope that uh, Brooke gets this joke. It's very to do with England English. So we'll just see. This, this is the test. If, if Brooke gets it, I'll carry on with it again. But apparently they've had a lockdown again in Buckinghamshire. Uh, my mate Gerard's Cross. All right, <laughs> Gerard's Cross. Gerard's Cross, you got it, man. That's brilliant. Yeah. Now um, the thing is, I've stopped getting my uh, chicken at the supermarket. Uh, I get it on Thigh Street. <laughs> yeah. Uh, suicide bombers. That's a, a topic, isn't it? What makes them tick? <laughs> Now, um, Wham, the band Wham, are um, getting back together again, and um, they've got a new song uh, dedicated to the Mayor of London, uh, Club Stropicana. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> trying them all out. Anyway, I was, uh, I was in a care home last week. I, I wasn't actually there to kind of look at it before I go and move in, but I was doing a gig there. And I, I, think, I think the residents, um, you know, enjoyed it because they were all pissing themselves. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I don't know whether you've heard, but uh, Netflix are bringing out another season of uh, Tiger King. It's called Cub Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> no. Now, this is a bit personal, but you know, <laughs> um, my wife caught me masturbating the other night. So <laughs> she started screaming. I said, Calm down, calm down, get a grip. <laughs> uh, I've got a part time job in a bowling alley. Uh, I'm temping. <laughs> now, I went to fix my Danish friend's sound system, uh, but apparently I shouldn't have tried to bang Olaf's son. <laughs> no, okay. It's not a bad one, that. And then I've got this new gag about Greek restaurants. I tried it out the other night and I smashed it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was in Liverpool last week at the Prosthetic Centre. Nice to see everyone taking a knee. <laughs> now, did you know um, King Kong's ill, but Godzilla? <laughs> Illa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know what you guys do in your spare time, but see what a sad bastard I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Anyway, um, somebody said, M Mark, why did the cast of Star Trek leave the set? I said, because William Shatner. <laughs> now, um, 
although I'm heterosexual, um, I do like to pick up men um, at building, <laughs> site, uh, building sites, um, and that's why they call me a jack off all trades. Um, <laughs> I, I did say to the foreman, uh, would you like a hand job? He said, not on my watch. Uh, so, um, <laughs> got, a, got, a, um, got a Romanian travel agent. Very good if you want to book a rest. Mm. <laughs> Got a Spanish carpet fitter, marvellous for the Andalay. <clears throat> and we've got a Swedish courier. He's okay, but if you're not in, he just takes the stock home. <laughs> no. And um, the other week, uh, I was in a lovely town in the Netherlands. Uh, my friend said, you trekked? I said, no, I took the bus. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact... Um, if you really want to, you know, buy a pet in the Netherlands, just go to Amsterdam. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was caught um, stealing hearing aids from a warehouse, but fortunately the judge gave me a pardon. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, the wife said uh go and get me some herbs supermarket closed in five minutes i dashed there it was a race against time no okay <laughs> um and i'm a freelance journalist so um there's a very hot story going on about the ice cream wars in scotland and i got the scoop <laughs> yeah my son said to me dad do you want to join our street gang i said yeah i'll give it a stab <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, now, I'm, I'm going to give you one or two, um, like, ironing puns now, because um, I had to do that on a show, uh, come up with ironing puns. The first one is, uh, you'll enjoy my ironing jokes. You'll be creasing yourself. <laughs> some of the jokes are off the cuff. And some of them I wrote when I was living in Hangar Lane. <laughs> But one thing's for certain, I have to tell you this, my ironing is held in high esteem. No? Okay. <laughs> so I'll tell you, people, people think I'm starch raving mad. Anyway, um, the other day, I was trying to explain to my wife about my problem with premature ejaculation, but it, it went way over her head. Um, <laughs> um, and, and the thing is... Um, you know what? Lockdown's been good for me because I, I like a bit of furlough. <coughs> Deary me, how, how much longer have I got left? Shall I carry on? Yeah. I've got about another 40. Yeah. <laughs> you want more? More? Oh. <laughs> no, I left, I left my dentures at the opera, but fortunately I had a falsetto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I got into a row with one of my colleagues, colleagues at the aircraft repair centre, so they sent me on a hangar management course. <laughs> no okay I, you know what i'm no good at crosswords but i'm not too damn <laughs> <laughs> and i missed the live coverage of the world hairdressing championships but no worries managed to catch the highlights <laughs> I, I did really well in the world masturbation championships of course uh, i came second <laughs> and that got me into the shootout. <laughs> now, the last time I got drunk um, was in Germany, and I woke up the following morning with a hangover. <laughs> <laughs> what about Essex comedians? They can't separate the wick from the chav. <laughs> I was in Greg's last week, and I witnessed a burglary, and I still took the rap. <laughs> I was raised by um, an alcoholic Australian couple. Um, I was fostered. <laughs> Ridiculous. And you know what? Just because I like wearing boys' swimming trunks doesn't mean I'm a speeding a speedophile. <laughs> well, it, I suppose it might do. What about cars that fail or MOT? Don't get me started. <laughs> No, okay. What about the guy who invited, who invented the typewriter? He certainly put in a shift. Well. <laughs> so I'm going to just tell you a little bit now um, about 
Oh, actually, I have to tell you that um, I used to be frightened of rock climbing, but I'm getting a little bolder. <laughs> <laughs> now, loft conversions. Price of them, gone through the roof. Hmm. And I got an extra three months on my storage facility. Could hardly contain myself. <laughs> yes. Okay. And finally, well, not finally the joke, but finally I've, I've qualified as a plastic surgeon, and that's raised a few eyebrows. <laughs> now, I could finish um, with this, this joke. Uh, I'll tell the joke, but I'm not going to finish with it. Um, I don't like the look of my friend Ray's cyst. And I'm the only guy on the circuit that can get away with a racist joke. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, myself in the sense that um, I got married when I was 33. And um, I, I had a lot of different girlfriends before I got married. Only a few since, but a lot before. <laughs> and... Um, I was thinking about it the other night. Um, the morning after they'd spent the night with me, they would say goodbye in their own language. You know, so ciao, uh, au revoir, shalom. <laughs> that was a good night. Um, salam, you know, arrivederci or whatever. But you know what? <clears throat> It was the American girlfriend that understood me the best because she always used to say, so long. <laughs> Thank you. Lovely to be with you. Uh, so long. So long. Uh, that's, that's cool. Uh, I... I, I, I Mark Rivlin, the master, the pun master. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to try a pun here. Uh, um, Go ahead. All right, all right, all right. Let's, let's see what we are. <clears throat> um, I hope I didn't. When I went climbing, um, oh, no, 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 no. Let's try another one. Um, yeah, I went climbing um, and I fell to the bottom of the ground because my friends weren't there. No, that doesn't make sense. All right, guys. I mean, <coughs> friends. You know, you get the clip friends when you go climbing, friends, and you hook into the. All right, that's too, it's too advanced. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Too advanced. Um, you know, <laughs> you get that with the friends. The no. Oh no. no okay. No. Basically, it was just a shit pun. Let's just. Go. <laughs> um, we got the master. <laughs> I can't even say it was really a shit pun. It wasn't a pun at all. It's got no um, title there. Um, <laughs> anyway, lovely. That was really fun. Thank you, Mark. Um, let's just let's carry on before. Uh, yes. So um, for our next act, always good to see him. So let's have a nice round of applause in the Zoom room. Ah, oh, lovely, 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 lovely. Ooh, this is this is exciting. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? There oh, there we go. There we go. Spotlighted. Hello, hello, hello. This is exciting, lovely people. Are, are we all fit and healthy? Fit? We fit? <laughs> we fit? Yes, yes. And it's fit. Fit. You fit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm fit and healthy. I'm, I'm fit and healthy. You know, I've been, I've been, I've been, I've been going to the gym since the end of lockdown. I'm fit. I'm fit and well, I was feeling fit and healthy. But then a, a, a friend of mine, he said to me, he said to me, no, Gareth, you're looking out of shape. No, you're not looking good. Not looking good. Got yourself a bit of a dad bod, Gareth. Bit of a dad bod. Yeah, I'm not even a dad. Not even a dad. No, I'm not even a dad. No, no, I'm not. No, no. I I I I have not got a dad bod. I've not got a dad bod. I've got the 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 Mac bod. Mac bod, yeah. And that's that, and that's not short for McDonald's or, or a clan in Scotland. No, the Mac bod. The middle-aged comedian bud yes no I, I, I got, I got, I got, I got, yes yes mark knows what i'm talking about yes I've got the, you know the happy hands the laughing lats the giggling guns yeah i got i got i got i got i've got i've got the mac bud yes yes no but um so so monday monday was supposed to be freedom day but it's not freedom day no no 
because because Boris said no. Say boo, Boris, boo, boo, boo. <laughs> yes, boo, Boris, boo, <laughs> boo. No, because because Boris said no, no. He doesn't want to open up. He doesn't want to open because 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 they all they they are scared of these mutant strains of COVID, aren't they? There's mutant strains, yeah, because you, you had the one from from India, the one from South Africa, the one <laughs> from the one from Brazil. Yeah, there was even one. Yeah, there was even one mutant strain of COVID found right here yeah, in Kent in England, right? Yeah, and it's just got me thinking: Where's the next mutant strain of COVID going to come from? Where, where, where's it going to come from? I'm thinking the the KFC in Shepherd's Bush. Yeah, I'm thinking the KFC. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, no, I, no, because I was at the KFC in Shepherd's Bush the other night. Oh, yeah, I did not feel good the next day. Oh, no, it was awful. Eh? I was like, like, I had a temperature, I had a headache, I was coughing, I was sneezing, lost my sense of taste, lost my sense of smell. Yeah, I did not feel good. Oh, I did not feel good. Yeah, and that was back in 2001. So we need to keep an eye on the KFC and Shepherd's Bush. Like, yeah, yeah. Ch chicken's very oily, very oily. Yes, yeah, very oily. Yeah, but like with these mutant strains, right? Like I just want to know what type of mutants are we dealing with? You know, are we dealing with are we dealing with X Men or Ninja Turtles? You know, you know, um, Wolverine or Donatello? You know, um, uh. A, a, a bad sideburns and a, and a, and a razor claw or, 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 or pizza eaters in a sewer. We, we need to know because, no, we need to know. We need to know. We need to know because we need, then we need to know because we'll only know then if, if the vaccines are going to work. Yeah, no, because like, the vaccines, because I was actually just about to ask who has had their vaccine, but I'm not going to ask. I'm not because that is nobody's business but your own. Don't ever, no, don't, don't tell me. No, don't ever tell anybody. It's your business if you, if you want to get vaccinated. It's, it's your personal business, you know. It's, it's, it's what you do to your body is your business. It's nobody else's business. It's, it's just like it's just like it's 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 none of your business if I've had an HIV test. It's none of your business. It's not it's none of your business if I've got a if I've got a if I've got a a, a mole on my on my arm that looks like Marilyn Manson's butthole. It's none of your business. None, <laughs> it's, 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 it's also, it's, 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 it's none of your business if I've had an abortion or not. No, there's no, <laughs> don't, no, don't ask, Bob, don't. I'm not telling, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say, it's none of your business. It's none of your, no, don't ask. It's none of your business. It's only my <laughs> business if I've had an abortion or not. It's only my, no, okay. Okay, well, I, 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 because we're friends, I haven't had an abortion. There, you know, I haven't had an abortion. <laughs> I haven't had an abortion, no. But but I, and yeah, and I, and, I, and I did have the vaccine. I, I had it. I had it a few weeks ago, right? So and and it was all nice. I went to the vaccination centre, you know. I queued up. Then when it was my turn, you know, I went to go see the the the, the, the doctor. And the doctor asked me. She 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 said, "Do you give your consent to be vaccinated?" And I said, "Yes, I give my consent. I am a consenting adult." I, <laughs> I, no, because you must always give your consent. You know, there must always be consent. You can't, you know, there must always be consent. So, yes. Yeah, so I gave my consent. And then, and then she said, she said, she said to me, okay, now, now you may have some mild side effects, you know, you know, you might have a bit of a sore head and, a, and, and an achy arm. You, you have some, might have some mild side effects, but, but, but don't listen to those anti-vaxxers, you know, you know, you, you, you're not going to grow an extra arm or an extra leg or, or you know, or, 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 or have anything strange, strange, or extreme happen, you know, you, so you'll be fine. And I'm like, but that's why I'm getting the vaccine, you know, I want, <laughs> I want mad side effects, you know, <laughs> third arm, that might not be a bad thing, you know, because, you know, I mean, because I, I need special powers. How else are we going to fight these mutant strains? How are we going to do it? No, I, I need that, you know, like, I mean, well, no, it's not fair. Why, why does Peter Park have to get bitten by a radioactive spider? You know, where's my radioactive spider? No, it's not fair. No. Yeah. I mean, it's been a few weeks now, right? And I haven't, I haven't had any side effects. I've been okay. But I'm thinking if I was to have side effects, probably the worst thing that would happen is that I'd grow a third nipple. Like, <laughs> Yeah, because I remember in Friends, did we all watch Friends? Like, like, like Chandler, Chandler, he had a third nipple. He called it his nubbin. Yeah, he had a third nipple, but, but, but he still ended up with Monica. So that was, <laughs> but imagine if he'd grown a third arm or a third leg, he might have ended up with, with Rachel or Phoebe. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, frick, I, I'll, I'll grow a third arm for Jenna Paniston. I'll do it. Yes. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. So, yeah, no. So, um, but yeah, the, the, the other reason I, I, I got the vaccine was because, like, um, vaccine passes, they're coming. I, the the government, but Boris says they're not, but you can't trust Boris. They come. <laughs> no, they can't. You can't trust him. You can't trust. No, they're coming. Like, because you're going to need a vaccine pass to go do grocery shopping, to go to the pub, go watch a football match. I reckon that you will even need a vaccine pass to have sex. Yeah, no, you will, you will. Because I, I remember like, you know, in the before times, in the old times, you know, when I used to have sex back then, like, yeah, <laughs> Mark, it happened, okay? Like, it did, it did, it did. Like, at, at least twice it happened. Yes, it did. <laughs> yes, it did, it did, it did happen. But, but, but like, I remember, like, you know, back then when, when I was with the lady and we were about to get intimate, the, the lady would normally say to me, Gareth, Gareth, have you got protection? Have you got a condom? Whereas I think in this new normal, the conversation is probably going to go something like this, like, Gareth, Gareth, have you got protection? Have you been Pfizer? So, <laughs> so, so, you know, you're going to need it. You're going to need a vaccine pass. But, but it might not be a bad thing if, if for men. For men, because like, if you're a man playing the dating game, you got to be the top of your game. Got to be, oh, you got to be top of your game. You got, you know, you got to be, you got to be good looking, charismatic, well dressed, have a sense of humor. You've got to be the top of your game. But I can just imagine, like, I, I'm, I think what will happen in this new normal. I can imagine a scenario where, you know, a lady will be in a bar or a club, and she'll be looking for, you know, gentleman suitors and. And then a man will come across the room and he'll come and speak to the lady. And she'll be thinking to herself, hmm, he's a bit scruffy. Yeah, he's not very good looking. And no sense of humor. Oh, he's as dull as dishwasher. No personality. Yeah, but at least he still has his sense of smell. He's a keeper. Yes, <laughs> he's a keeper. He's a keeper. Yes, yes. But like, I noticed now, like even the dating apps, right? Apparently the dating apps, there's something there that, that says if you've been vaccinated or not, you know, like, it's, 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 so like it's even gone to the dating app. So like, like I can imagine these profiles, it probably has like these profile says probably has like something like brown hair, five foot 10 and Pfizer. Yeah. <laughs> vaccinated and virile. Yeah. Yeah. Eight inches and immunized. Yeah. <laughs> Jabbed and getting jiggy with it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's where he is. Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, so I've 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 been watching, I, I've been watching a lot of movies during lockdown, which is good because I like watching movies. I like watching movies, but like, w w what I hate is 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 when people take take movies literally. Like like I've got a mate, right? Like and 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 he actually watches a movie and he will look for every little fault in that movie. Like he like like it's stuff you'll never find. But he and that's why he watches a movie. And it's like I hate that. Like a movie should be an escape. Like like if, if 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 you take a movie literally, you know, that's like watching the Superman movie and believing that Christopher Reeve can actually fly, or watching Pirates of the Caribbean and believing that Johnny Depp is actually a pirate, or watching Point Break and believing that Keanu Reeves can actually act. Yeah. And, uh, that's my time. Back to Andrew. Very good. Well done, Gareth. Uh, yeah, literally. And there are people who do take some some films quite literally, aren't there? Has anyone seen uh, Bird Box? Uh, it's from Sandra Bullock. Dan, you've seen it, Daniel. Yeah. So Bird Box was there. So basically, it's, it's, is it like, like I say, it's a zombie thing, but basically they say they can get infected by looking at somebody's eyes. You know, they turn into, they, they turn crazy. Um, if they look into somebody else's eyes, who's got this crazy zombie thing themselves? So a bit like that. But the way to protect themselves is by blindfolding themselves, so not to look into anybody's oh. eyes. So that's how, what happens. And uh, Sandra Bullock's character basically, she managed to escape because she follows a route without looking into people's eyes. So when this film came out, I did see an article afterwards. People were taking it literally that there was a guy who thought 
if he went out and looked in somebody's eyes that he could get this thing that was on the film Bird Box. So he blindfolded himself and started <laughs> crossing the road and got nearly run over. Um, he took it literally. So yeah, these things do happen. Um, yes, anyway, that was fun. That was nice. Thank you, Gareth. Um, I, you know, I was kind of listening to that. Um, uh, when you said when you were going on about none of your business, I kind I thought that was quite catchy. None of your business. <laughs> kind of like could it be like a a tune title, a song title for Britney Spears. She could sing it. <laughs> none of your business. <laughs> Get a song coming out saying none of your business to her dad, and she could get on with her own life. Uh, anyway, how do we get to Brittany? That was really fun. Um, we have our final act for this evening, um, a friend and from Big Smoke as well. So let's keep it warm in the uh, Zoom room and round applause for our next act for Brooke Her. Yes. Cheers, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Nice to see everyone here. Um, I'm cur currently on house arrest right now because I I escaped England for a few weeks and that's a crime and you got to do days at your house. It's nice and easy. I mean, I get to pick my digs, so I'm enjoying that part. Uh, it says circus over in America too. We should charge pay-per-view. You know, we've got the, the corpse in the Oval Office now. This guy, I mean, in his inaugural address, he mentioned that Abraham Lincoln signed up Procl the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. I'm surprised you didn't follow it with, I know because I was there. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, he was unaffected with the toilet paper shortage. Uh, didn't affect him whatsoever. But if there's ever an adult diaper shortage, he's totally screwed. <laughs> oh, man. He, he, and, and, uh, and, and so, you know, we got Biden in there. And, you know, he, the guy ran for president three different times before he achieved the office. Now he's not even alert enough to enjoy it. <laughs> We're fat. All right, so we got, and then we got Boris here, right? I mean, I'm coming, coming back to Boris. It's like out of the frying pan, into the fire. Boris, do you ever get that feeling that when Boris's advisors approached him and they were saying, you know, Boris, we've got a couple options on how you can handle that pandemic. He was like, which one gives me more power? It's, 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 it's like he's milking this last little, or he's milking the last little uh, uh, lifting. I was, I, I planned my trip to come right back for Freedom Day on Monday. Freedom Day was supposed to be on Monday. Is it Freedom Day yet? Is it Freedom Day? And do you guys remember that part in all the history books where governments took more power and overstepped boundaries and then just gave it back really easily? <laughs> remember that? <laughs> uh, I don't remember that either. So we've got Boris. He's not listening to the science. He's listening to the seance. It's the ghost of Mussolini, everybody. Track and trace, Boris. Track and trace. All right. Uh, where are we at here? You know, the excuse for everything. What's the excuse for everything, right? The excuse for everything is because COVID. Because COVID. That's why I don't have a punchline for this joke. And also, you know, look, look I, I will see that uh, uh, with... Uh, with Boris here, there's a lot of people who view Boris, I think a prime minister is almost like a father figure. Yeah, so like Boris is your daddy. Of course, with his reputation, he might be. He actually might be. <laughs> no. um, they said that on, the, on this lockdown, there was like, the, 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 there was a, a huge number, I think it was like 6 million more Britons were were getting on antidepressants. But then there was an 18 month waiting list to see a counselor to couple with those pills. <laughs> so the, 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 the NHS was just like, here, here guys, go, here's some pills, go figure it out on your own. And it, and it really did make me wonder about mental health, you know, because work, we, we work to pay the bills, but we party to look after our mental health. However we want to do it. Some people do it at church, singing gospel songs. Other people, you know, put a needle in their arm. I don't know. I'm not suggesting you go that far. But what I'm saying is that, you know, if, if, if Boris says parties are non-essential, then he thinks mental health is non-essential. But then knowing Boris, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, the guy's kind of, you know, he's out there. But I, I, I've been thinking a lot about the differences between the U.S. and the U.K. lately. So I did a little list of just some observations. Hopping 
back and forth between the two continents. After all, I've got a lot of time to think here on house arrest. All right, uh, for example, here in England, we have fielders on pitches. In America, we have pitchers on fields. Uh, in the UK, you call it a fair. In America, we call it a carnival. But to all Americans, if you come to England, don't call the carnies fairies. They punch in the face. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Here in the UK, love bite, as in, you know, the mark left behind. We say hickey, as in the people leaving it. Like, ah. That's a bit hickey, you know. Like, yeah, that's very like, good. <laughs> right in England, you call them gobstoppers. This is your this is your little way to keep the children nice and quiet. Give them a gobstopper. In America, we're a little more, you know, forthright. We call them jawbreakers. Like, here, kid, shut up. You know, better enjoy it. All right, jawbreakers. Here we go. Uh, that was that was man, shouldn't joke. That was punching down literally to kids. How dare I? All right, uh, maths, you call it maths. We call it math. Yeah, as if there's one, I'm like, yeah, I know math. Two plus two is four. <laughs> you're like, no, there's a few maths there, Mr. American. All right, and I'll, I'll leave you uh, with the final one here. Uh, you say coleslaw, we say slaw. Efficient, lazy, I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes it's when it's an American thing. But, let, let, you know, speaking of efficient and lazy with this bad segue, have you seen lately in the news this invisible sculpture that was sold? So this artist, Salvatore Gaura, Gaura he sold for 15,000 euros what was in someone else's mind. <laughs> Just imagine, like, check this out. <laughs> imagine seeing something there. That'll be 15,000 euros. So, so we've got that. And then the Bitcoin, right? The Bitcoin. I saw a sign on the, you've probably seen this on the tube. Has anybody seen the sign? If you're seeing Bitcoin on the underground, it's time to buy. Have you seen this? All right. Well, first of all, it sounds like the shoeshine guy is giving you stock advice. But secondly, Bitcoin is an invisible currency. If you're seeing Bitcoin on the underground, you're hallucinating. Don't buy, seek medical help. It's an invisible, come on, it's an invisible currency. You know, I feel like I'm gonna, I'm gonna clear nosedive right now. I'm in prison, guys. All right, down the call. Don't worry about it. Um, I guess my point is people are paying an increasing amount. People are paying an increasing amount of physical cash for things they can't see. So I'm announcing the sale of my dick pics, everyone. <laughs> not, that's not included. All right, that's it, everybody. I'm gonna move through. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> ah, invisible. Oh, I might invest in an invisible holiday. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> like the COVID test before, that was fantastic. Thank you, Britt. Um, uh, yeah, you mentioned like parties, and, yeah, d uh, different parties. I think really for Boris, he's probably just missing the sex parties. <laughs> probably his kind of party. Um, good. Uh, that's been a really fun evening. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for those who are sort of taking a break from being outside and then lovely the weather um thank you for watching um also just, yeah thank you for dan for being here and watching as well